our first in-studio guest of the week. And uh, I've known this man for a very long time since he first arrived at the Worldwide Leader in Sports a year after I arrived there. Mm -hmm. He is now the chief trends officer of Caesar Sportsbook. Trey Wingo here on the Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you, Trey. Yeah, good to see you, brother. Um, it's been a bit. Uh, the it good news is I'm the first guest of the week, which yes. means we can only go up from here. That's not true. So the bar is set low, That's, so everyone else can climb above it. Is that the uh, is that the trend that you're sensing? <laughs> I mean, because it's <laughs> kind of the I mean, trend of my life, Rich. So oh, I'm, oh I'm, I'm good with it. Trey, good, with go. it. good to see you here, brother. Good to see you, man. Yeah. yeah. How, how long have you been here already? Or do oh, you've got? Does your kids still live out here? Yeah, both our kids live out here. Oof. My parents are in Palm Springs, so I got here. I flew in from Maui on. Of course you did. Tuesday. Of course you did. Of yeah. course you did. <laughs> oh, did I say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> of course you did. That slipped out. Oh, I, of course you did. I, I didn't mean to drop that. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel terrible. I of course don't you did. feel terrible at Speaking all. Of, by the way, wow. Thursday, Chris Berman's on the hey, show. Hey, did you see him? Hey. Circle the wagon. Did you see him? I I did not see him on the island. He was still back in uh, okay in the confines of lovely Northwest Connecticut, buried <laughs> under 17 feet of snow. But you are not. That is a factual statement. <laughs> <laughs> Which you are not, because I do not believe it was snowing in uh, in Maui, Hawaii. No, it was okay, not. by the way, th yeah. is, this is a great uh, quote. Um, I just saw Joe Burrow just said this moments ago. He was asked on his Zoom today for advice to younger athletes. He said, quote, don't have a workout and then go post it on Instagram and then go sit on your butt for four days. Work in silence. I love that. that but that's him, right? That's who he is. Right. Like, that's him to his core. There was somebody else. I, God, it drives me crazy. I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was, uh, it was Devontae Adams, who basically said, hey, all you wide receivers, quit posting workouts. Run routes. Right. Just run routes. Yeah, yeah. Run routes, do your work. And then when you're successful because you put in the work, then people will see what you've done. Don't, don't put out workouts. Just go do your stuff. I mean, and, and his ascendancy, I can't, you know, I can't see another one like it now i know there's the connection to brady in terms of year two and you know um out of nowhere if you will but burrows out of nowhere happened at the collegiate level yeah and we've never seen somebody take the reins of an organization that needs someone to take the reins first overall after having done it at the collegiate level in a manner that nobody's ever done at 60 touchdowns. Like, this is one of the most meteoric rises we've ever seen. Yeah, I remember, sport. I mean, Urban chose Dwayne Haskins over Joe Burrow. I mean, like, and that might have been the right call at the time. He had 50 touchdowns. He did. He played, he played very well at Ohio State. Not to defend Urban Meyer. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I mean, we that, wanted, that's an impossible you don't want to. You don't want to kick somebody when they're down. Wait a minute. Hold Wait, on a minute. Did I just. No, I, I was about wow. to say, no, you want to dunk on them. I'm right? sorry. Instead of kicking? No, but I mean, it, yeah. he did. It, it, and, and my alma mater, I think, yeah. did have something to do with that. Because yeah. when JT Barrett went down in the big house, I remember sitting there thinking, okay, we got Ohio State right where we want him. And then, yeah. and then Dwayne Haskins came off the bench and looked phenomenal. Sucker came out of nowhere. He did. Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you. Thank you. Trey well, Wingo. Uh, 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 no, but the Joe thing is, like, you know this as someone who has done the draft and all that kind of stuff. You find all these little notes, right? You find all these little nuggets. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest things I remember from the 2020 draft packet uh, that my great researcher, Jim Carr, who worked with me at ESPN, is now part of the Caesars operation with Very me. Good. Jimmy, you're the best. I love you. Um, he found this note that they did a, like a psychological evaluation of Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. And the guy said his disassociative properties are off the charts. In other words, in a, in a stressful situation he responds like a first responder, like all the, the bleep that's going on and terrible, it doesn't affect him. And he said, in fact, it's so off the charts, he's either going to be someone like a first responder or perhaps a very good criminal. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like the, whatever right. it is, he, he could use those properties for good or, or, or for <laughs> evil. Right, right. And he's used them very well for good at this point. I'm yeah, just, he's like Dexter. Just like, you know. Right. Like, yeah. He well. can remove himself from anything <laughs> and, still, that, the ice water and still sort of yeah. accomplish what he wants to accomplish. So he's in the Super Bowl, he'll either be Dexter or Dexter Lawrence. Is that what you're saying? Pretty nice. much there. Yeah, sure. The Super Bowl MVP, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So with. Burrow, I couldn't help again but think that I was, you know, in SoFi prior to kickoff of the NFC Championship game, and they're showing yeah. the AFC Championship game on the screen, 
And the Niners and Rams fans were all going nuts every single time the Bengals were successful in a snap, in a play, in a first down, in a score, and then in a win. I kept thinking to myself, are you sure this is the kid you want here? Or do you want the Mahomes who this year has been up and down? Do you want the guy who even in this game has shown that the defense can sometimes confound, despite how generationally talented he clearly is, do you want the kid who doesn't know what he doesn't know yet? Well, see, I that, mean, that, that's know? the key, right? Like, I, I think at this point, the Chiefs and Mahomes understand the reality of losing as well as winning. Like, the Bengals don't know that at all. Like, they're not, they're very reminiscent, actually, Rich, of the 92 Cowboys who, you know, just sort of stumbled into the postseason one year. And then in 92, they went to San Francisco with no expectations and they beat the 49ers at home, Mm -hmm. uh, and then they just destroyed Buffalo in the Super Bowl. They don't know anything but success. So they have, they play like they're on Madden rookie mode at times, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, The Chiefs thing is interesting because the one thing I've I've learned about this season from start to finish is the only team that can beat the Chiefs would be the Chiefs in 2021. Like, you're up 18 points at home with Patrick Mahomes. You win that game 99.999% of the time. The thing at the end of the first half was the worst decision I've ever seen Mahomes make. Awful. And he was clearly not aware of the situation because he tried to call timeout, even though he knew they didn't have a timeout. But as much as bad as the first, the end of the first half was, the first series was terrible for the Chiefs. They got a terrible spot on that fourth down call, and they called timeout, and then they challenged. Well, if they just challenged and not called timeout, guess yeah. what? Yeah. They have a timeout at the end of the half, and they kick that field goal at least. And if they go up with that field goal, they probably win that game. But going off the halftime of that game, the Chiefs looked like they were down 11 as opposed to up 11. And the Bengals were like, we've done this already. It's kind of crazy. Trey Wingo here on the Rich Eisen Show, Caesars Sportsbook Chief Trends Officer Trey Wingo, the CTO of Caesars here on the Rich Eisen Show. I mean, what you just said, though, and you're right. I'm not saying you're wrong. But what you just said is you just said, and this, I think, speaks to what Joe Burrow has done. Yeah. Along with the rest of Jamar Chase and Burrow and everyone else and McPherson, who has got ice in his legs, Money man. Mac. Okay, and Mixon. You just said the Bengals don't know anything but winning. You literally just said that. In the playoffs, I absolutely. Mean, oh, I, I, but like, like, this is a team that that four straight years finished in last. Like, the yeah. last team to do what they're doing is the 99 Rams, yeah. who if, won yeah. this trophy that's sitting between us, sir. You know, so... Oh, that's not a that's not a swag bag thing. No, I don't get to take no, that home. This is not. This is not. <laughs> I was told there were gifts. Yeah. I mean, I uh, you'll, get was... a, you'll get a mug, sir. Same thing. The really. VLT is not available on richeisenshop.com. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, like, if, if, for example, if they win Sunday, they will have a faster turnaround than the ultimate turnaround, which was the Cowboys from '89, who went right. one and fifteen to Super Bowl champs back to back years. They'll right. do it faster than that team, which is remarkable. They, at this point, they're playing with house money. They, they don't know anything but success at this mm-hmm. point. These guys, they're like like Joey said, like we're not underdogs. We're really good. And sometimes when you've been to where the Chiefs have been, where you've been at the top, you've been to the Super Bowl, you've lost one. Like that is a th- yeah, that is a thing that they don't have to deal with yet. And I think it's a huge mental advantage for them. Trey Wingo here on the Rich Eisen Show. What are the I, I, are the Bengals more interesting to talk about than the Rams this week, do you think? No. Or, I mean, the Rams have a ton of things to be talking about. Like, so the, the Rams are interesting because they're doing it in the exact opposite way we're supposed to do it. Like, Les Snead, whom I love, treats first-round picks like spoiled potato salad. Get it out of here! Mm-hmm. It's been in the sun too long, you know? Right. I mean, think about what they did. They traded two first-round picks to get Jared Goff, and then traded Jared Goff and two more first-round picks to get Matthew Stafford. They're on a run of going seven straight seasons without a first-round pick. Uh, that's only happened one other time, one franchise. The the Washington, I mean, I guess we call them the Commanders now, but the other reincarnations of Washington under George Allen once went 11 straight years without a first-round pick, the Over the Hill gang. Mm-hmm. And then when Joe Gibbs was winning all his Super Bowls from 81 to 92, they also went seven straight years without a first-round pick. He's trading first-round picks for Jaylen a proven Ramsey commodity, well. Jalen Ramsey, uh, you know, um, they trade one for Brandon Cooks. They trade one away for Brandon Cooks. So, I mean, right now they have a 2024 first round pick. 
I'm under the complete assumption that they won't be using it. Exactly. You know, there's some freshman on campus right now thinking, "Damn, I'm not yeah. going to be a Ram." Nope. <laughs> I'm going to go find me a five year vet. Shot. But he always he he chafes it at this conversation though because you know teams are built on second night picks and now third day picks. Well, well that, you know? but that's why they're good so. at this because Cooper Cup wasn't a first round pick, right? No. They find Tyler Higby wasn't a first round pick. Hell, Bobby Trees, Robert Woods wasn't a first round pick. So they what what enables them to do what they do is the fact that their scouting department is so good. Because if they weren't finding all these other players in rounds right. two through seven and undrafted free agents, none of this would work. None of it. It's, a tra- it's just a testament to doing it a different way. And it proves the cap, really. Any team that says, well, we can't because of the cap, that's an excuse. The cap is like a bowl of jello. It's completely malleable and changeable. You can take this money over here and make it over here, yeah. convert it to a signing bonus. So it doesn't. Like when the Chiefs signed Mahomes to that half a billion dollar deal, they created cap space. <laughs> they created cap space by giving a guy allegedly five hundred million dollars, which, by the way, which will be torn up in a year or two, and he'll get a eight hundred fifty million dollar contract. Probably. So here's a trend for you that I don't yeah. know if it's a trend or not, and I I leave it to you to I guess bless it with the <laughs> the uh, blue check mark of of being a trend. Yeah. The last two NFC quarterbacks in the Super Bowl were off season acquisitions that everybody was talking about because yeah. they were huge, big boom off-season acquisitions. Yeah. And the concept, even when Brady went to Tampa, is like, okay, yeah, yeah but can he win the Super Bowl in his first year? Like, is he going to win a Super Bowl there? Yeah. The answer is yes. Yeah. Now it's Stafford. When he was acquired and that whole business when we learned about what's going on at Cabo and then it was that big trade with the Lions that yeah. made it official and – Everyone's like, yeah, but can he really win in the play? Who is Matthew Stafford anyway? And he's here. Yeah. They yeah. made it. They didn't. And, and they no. actually even did the Bucks one better by not only eliminating them, yeah. but hosting the NFC Championship. Which games. the Bucks the, didn't do a year ago because they were wild card. So is that a trend, do you think? Like the next, At, like as Rodgers is going to basically say, put me on the market. You know, is it we gonna oh. get like oh, well, Russ? Well, listen, I, I, I mean, don't know how many segments you have before, but the Aaron Rodgers thing could go can, for hours. I mean, okay. we, can, we can do that. <laughs> But it, it is, uh, look, see, this is, and it goes back to my premise. Yes. Like, wins are not a quarterback stat. Teams win games. You got, you got Stafford on a better team. Guess what? He won playoff games. He was in Detroit. They were not a good team. They lost playoff games. You know, Tom Brady went to a team that had Godwin, that had Evans. They got Antonio Brown. And, oh, let's get that Gronk guy out of retirement. Right. That might have had some say. In, and the and defense as well. Devin White, Shaq Barrett that came over from Denver. I mean, like, they went to really good – both of these guys went to really good situations. I'm not taking anything away from their play. Yes. But they were dropped into pretty cushy situations that allowed them to succeed. I mean, remember, the Bucks last year were 7-5. and five, And that was, remember, the four fingers with a Thursday night game against the Bears, yes. Tom. And then they didn't lose again. And the Rams were kind of the same way, you know? Yeah, they had that mid-season, mid-season slump. And that was when Robert Woods went down and Odell yep. came in. By the way, apparently Odell not the problem in Cleveland. Oh, that. Uh, and apparently that wasn't the thing. Maybe yeah, it yeah. might have been some other things. Um, but, you know, you need to find a rhythm. And it's always that team that gets in a rhythm late. And it feels like the Bucks did that last year, and the Rams are certainly in that rhythm now. I guess the Super Bowl for Cleveland Browns fans, right? They're uh-huh. gonna be like, can they, if the Bengals win, when they don't have to hear yeah. about Odell. And if Odell wins, it's just be like... Yeah, could have had him. And the bank, and, you know, and the worst part, the Browns and the Lions are the the oldest two teams that have yet to get to the party. I mean, the other sure. ones are you know the Texans and the Jags. They've right. only been around for a while. But well, speaking of being around for a while, you yeah. got one more segment in you. I got a lot. I appreciate you saying come the on to that because you know it's like one of those things like when you ask a guest how you doing, like mm. you, you know what I've had yeah. a rough day. Yeah, and like, you, you really want to know? I got a flat tire. <laughs> uh, I you know, my kids that. hate me. Well, you one know. thing to the one thing to help out with a flat tire is yeah. the gift bag that you're going to get when you walk out of it. So I get an air pump, but not the trophy. That's correct. Got it. There you go. But the air pump will have the Rich Eisen Show Running Man logo on it. What more do I need? Actually, I don't know. Do we have an air pump, Chris? Can you look into that, please? Uh, let me just uh, make that happen, will you? Okay. Call Eight, your friend Bezos. 844-204-RICH is the number to dial right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, don't you dare go anywhere more with Trey Wingo. Uh, put the photograph up that uh, Trey just texted me. Who is that handsome gentleman to the left right there? That is my Stadium? father, Hal okay. Wingo. Okay. Um, Hal Wingo II? Hal Wingo II. Okay. Or as he was called growing up, Sonny. Okay. Oh. All right. Yeah. See, I'm a, I'm the third, so that's where the tray comes Understood. from. Understood. Um, and that's us at SoFi over the weekend. My dad uh, was a reporter for Life magazine and covered the first Super Bowl out here in Los Angeles. Yeah. 
So we did a whole thing on for, that's going to drop uh, on Caesars channels uh, and on my feeds later on this week mm -hmm. about the difference between Super Bowl one and Super Bowl fifty six and like his his famous line was like Super Bowl one for Life magazine they they thought it was a nothing burger you know I mean like were, what are you going out there to yeah LA why are you for? doing that right like, yeah, there were thirty thousand empty seats at the Coliseum it was on two networks CBS and NBC because they wanted to get as much attention as possible right um, and like. Nobody showed up. And, and for Life magazine, their thing was there needed to be some buzz, some juice, because, you know, uh, a newspaper is going to have the story of the game the next day. So they were looking for something that mm -hmm. would sort of gravitate uh, people to read about the Super Bowl. And he filed a story and the photographer sent some sent some fo uh, some photos in back to New York and it didn't even make the edition. Like that's how that's how the Super Bowl was not a thing wow. back then. It didn't even make the edition of Life magazine. And talk about how things have changed in this business. Yes. The whole Life magazine philosophy was, let's cover 14 things, and maybe two will make the magazine. Can you imagine that today? No. Hey, go go get five shoots, and maybe we'll use one. <laughs> like, that that just doesn't happen. No, because they'll just put it on their TikTok feed. Correct. Ex exactly. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, do like, in, I'll do Instagram Live. And they're also you know? like, what's a publication? Exactly. What are you talking about? What do you, what do you mean, a paper? What, are, <laughs> what is that? So it, it, it was fun. It's, it's going to be really fun. And, you know, his, his recollections of that between also the difference between SoFi and the Coliseum and... It's just amazing how much this thing has taken over us as a nation. Yeah. Like, I think the Super Bowl is the only thing 100 million people in America can agree on anymore. Just to sit there and watch just it. Just sit there and watch it. Right there. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's fun. It's going to be, it's gonna be dad, good. Man. It was really a blast. And uh, he had a blast. We, we also got a, his favorite car was a 67 Mustang. So we got a 67 Mustang and drove around L.A. a little bit in it to talk about stories. No kidding. Yeah, it was a good time. Very Rain Man of you. Ah, 10 minutes to Wapner. Okay. I'm an excellent That's driver. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Well, you could have actually, my could, you actually included Vegas in it, too. Actually, he said, let's take it to Vegas. Ah! I, was like, oh! I, was like, well, I know a place we can go, as a matter of fact. Dad. I don't think the owner of the car is down with that. <laughs> but it was fun. We drove around and had a good time. Trey Wingo here on the Rich Eisen Show. NetSuite by Oracle is a sponsor of the Rich Eisen Show. If you're ready to upgrade, go to netsuite.com slash rich. We're back here on our terrestrial radio network. One big happy family with our Peacock and Sirius XM feeds with uh, Trey Wingo, Caesars Sportsbook Chief Trends Officer. Um, so, yeah. how did you wind up with Caesars, Trey, when you they knock on your door, or what happened here? Walk yeah, it was a really this. interesting story, actually. Obviously, uh, the Supreme Court ruling changes everything, and Caesars is an official betting partner of the NFL. So I was, you know, happily doing the other stuff, the podcast, writing for Facebook, working for Pro Football Network, and a bunch of other stuff. And I got a call from a guy that you and I used to work with. Who's that? John Kosner. Okay. At dot com. And he said, hey, I have some people that want to talk to you. I was like, well, you know, fine. I'm, I'm really sort of in a happy place. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. And... He's like, you're going to want to want to talk to these people. So I'm like, okay. Wow. By the way, yeah. if that usually leads to some, a big wig in Vegas, it doesn't end very well. Yeah. Yeah. Someone usually in Vegas wants to stories, talk to you. Somebody in Vegas wants to talk to you. Yeah, I, step in I, the I car. Think it, I think yeah. it would be to your benefit to talk to these people. Yeah. It doesn't end very well. Yeah. But. I didn't have to get in a car with two very large men in gold necklaces. <laughs> very so, good. Okay. Uh, it was a Zoom call uh, okay. with a couple so of that, people that's good. That, uh, that used to work. With us at ESPN. Who are these people? Uh, Sharon Otterman is her okay. name. She's the CMO of William Hill Caesar. So uh -huh. worked with me on ESPN. Remember ESPN the phone? Dude. <laughs> right? Are you serious? Yeah, the that's phone. that's yeah, ESPN the phone. I Kids look that. it up. It's a dinosaur. Dude, it was a, did you know that? I almost got one. Yeah. Did See, you you're like you that's why it didn't work. You almost got one. I did not get one. <laughs> it was the early days of cell phones, like yeah. early two thousands. I just wouldn't quit my Blackberry. Yeah. For By anything. the way, BlackBerry. Think For a long time that. ago, how I much of the market I, BlackBerry had, and now they no longer exist. Life well, comes at you fast. They're like man, six dollars a share. Trey. So it's ES, good. it's amazing how things work. So ESPN.com and ESPN the phone, the phone are are, are part of your your yeah. your history, and they 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 wind up on a Zoom, right? Yeah. And uh, you know Spence Kramer. Do you remember Spence? Of course. Spence is part of this. Do you remember okay. Jeff Gagne? He owes me five bucks. Well, <laughs> I can get it from him. Okay. I can get it from him. I'll okay. see him later this week. Okay. So, you know, these were all guys that I used to work, people that I used to work with at ESPN. It's, uh -huh. So I'm basically doing the same stuff for them that I did uh, 
at ESPN, just doing it in a different place on a different platform. And then uh, Kenneth, Sir Kenneth of Maine wants Sir Kenneth there of Maine too. is there. And they, this was the real se- deal sealer. Deal sealer? I think that, that works. That's a phrase. It's yeah, uh, let's um, make it work. They said, I hey, think it, it's yeah. trending. Yeah, it's already trending because you said it, Trey. Check. There you go. Um, right. They said, hey, would you want to come to, uh, to Vegas and do a shoot with the Mannings and Halle Berry? I was like, <laughs> yeah. Don't forget JB Smooth, let me too. See. Yeah, JB. He said, let me see. Give me. I think I could make that work. Yeah. I think I could do you that. You fit it in your schedule. Fit it in the schedule. So that was a good day. It's been fun. <laughs> My one Halle Berry story, I'll tell it. Hey. I've got this one Halle Berry story. <laughs> this was... It's not that be, great of a story. That's actually, a great story. <laughs> well, I'll try, I'll try and top it with Excuse my Halle me. Berry story. It's my only one, Chris. <laughs> Okay? Not it's not like I've got multiple Halle Berry stories. <laughs> right, that's fair, that's you know fair. me, Rich. I'm down for any hey, Halle so Berry story. You know story. the story already. I, I, and I'll hear it again. <laughs> that's a smart man right there. Any Halle Berry story. Well, what was that four years ago, five years ago? Yeah, something, something like that. Like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, and, like I'm, that. and I'm, it's my silly uh, time of my, my life when I decided to actually train for my run. Yeah. And so uh, I, <laughs> I started to try and get into shape by jogging. Yeah. Which, or jogging with a soft J. I don't know. You jogging, barely just run. Well, whatever I was doing, yeah. and it's just like it, it's one of those where I go three blocks, wherever, and I got to stop, and yeah. it's just you know, it's yeah. not pretty. It's it's yeah. you know, my gait isn't good, and I'm like <laughs> heaving to, to get air in, back into my body. It's not yeah. working out very well because you know I'm probably going home and have a soda. But at any rate, so I'm I'm running, and as I'm running, and I'm, I'm just getting ready to stop, yeah. I see Holly Berry pick up, I guess, her kids at the corner at a bus stop or yeah. being dropped off. And I just sucked in my gut, just found a second one like <laughs> Forrest Gump. Inspiration comes in many forms. And as I run past, I'm like thinking to myself, what am I doing this for? Like what, yeah. what could, what is my end goal? Like what, like, like what, you're, you're like a dude. What, it, you're a dude. So it just, you're a dude. That's what happened. Right. You're a dude. So that's what yeah. happened to me. It's just like, cause I thought about like, what did I think was going to happen? Yeah. Her children are there. It's yeah. not like all of a sudden, like, wow, who is that guy? Yeah. You know, like oh, I've got to stop oh, it. Oh, and it's is, like, there's no follow. Up. There would, would be no follow. I don't know what I was doing. This is this is how you are wired from the beginning of time. Okay, this is this is what it is. Hunter gatherer reflex kicked in, and that's my Holly Berry story. Yeah. Well, now, I, you go. Okay, here's. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yes. there's a, I, I do have a slight connection to Holly Berry. Okay, in 1986, does this involve Kevin Bacon? No, it does not. Okay, but it involves. Well, it might involve Kevin Bacon, <laughs> actually. Doesn't everything involve Kevin Bacon? Right? I'm, sorry, no, really, we yeah. make it work I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. So in 1986, <laughs> Halle Berry was runner-up Miss USA yes. to a woman named Christy Fitchner. Okay. Christy Fitchner lived one street over from me in Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> one street over. And she went on to be Miss runner-up Miss Universe that year. Okay. In high school, Christy Fitchner dated none other than... Kevin Bacon. No, it was Steve Young. (laughs) Steve Young and Christy Fitchner were the power couple at my high school, Greenwich High School. The rest of us never had a chance. So as I'm sitting at the shoot Mm -hmm. with Hallie, who was stunning as Cleopatra for Caesars. Yeah, I saw the commercials, by the way. I saw the commercials. Not terrible. Uh, I figure I got one shot. Okay. So, like you. you (laughs) And I say say to Hallie Berry, if I say the words Christy Fitchner to you, what do you say? And she goes, how do you know Christy Fitchner? <laughs> I was like, well, and I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. I'm sorry. In conversation. There. It worked. It I'm worked in. And now, yes. And so I said, well, she grew up in me, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, I wonder what she looks like now. And I said, I think you won the long game. Is that what you said to her? <laughs> and, and that's how I got the picture. She's, she's like, oh, that's very nice. Can I get a picture? Sure. So that was my end game, just to get a picture. <laughs> And it worked. Okay. So thank you, Christy, Let's, wherever you are. Well I appreciate you. Mwah. Put up a poll question. Uh, okay. Whose Holly Berry story is better? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, do you know what this reminds me of? Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of on Friday, me bringing up to Calvin Johnson that he lost high school player Sean of the McVay. year in Georgia to Sean McVay. Yeah. And he said, what did you say? Something like, there's no damn way that that would actually be the case or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's like, I only ever, ever heard about, about this, this story after, after I made the hired. Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah after McVay yeah. got hired. And so you're telling me he wasn't aware of it when he was in high school? No. So is, that, is that what we're supposed to believe That's there? what he said. Yeah, is that what he said. Is that what we're supposed to believe? Yes. He yes. said he never heard, basically had heard of Sean while he was in high yeah. school. Yeah. There's no damn that? way. There's no damn way, or something like that. Do we that. believe that though? Well, I, Sean McVay is his what? Christy Fichtner? Is that what Fichtner. Yeah. Fichtner. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, okay. Another side note. Do you remember that horrible reality TV show? Who wants to marry my dad? 
No. In the early 2000s? No. Christy Fitchner was a contestant on that show. Halle Berry's won the long game. Again, she won the long game. <laughs> Pretty much. And go see Moonfall. It's out in theaters. By the way, ladies oh, and gentlemen, yeah. look at you. There Here we go. go. Uh, those commercials are funny. They were a blast. And Kenneth Wheelock, Maine, is flying in, I think, as we speak. Is that right? He'll be here. Okay. Those are funny. Co Cooper, Manning, they're Very all there. All, all there. Archie. The spread everybody. must have been insane, right? Casino spreads. I mean, casino spreads we, at a shoot well, have got to be off the charts. Like, there's not, we, it's not like some, like, bag no, of chips no, no, it, and, it, and no. water that's, it's got to be multiple styles of water. Yeah. Like, right? Like, what, what, what does a casino style shoot we, we shot it spread look like? At the top villa on the top of Caesar's yes, Palace. Did. Like the, I, hang I, the hangover suite? I, no, that's a different hotel, which I cannot yeah. discuss. Good job. Point. Good Thank job, Chris. It's a different, Caesars. What are you guys talking No, it's not. Yeah. It, no, no. Oh, it might have been. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm not going to do no, no, that. No, no. Like, come on. That's good. Come on. Is, is this the real Caesars Palace? Yeah, You're exactly he right. Caesar where it's Caesar. Come on, guys. But this come on. one, come on. no, this one, I think, was like 10 times that size. Well, I literally wow. think this villa was about 6,500 square feet on the top of one of the towers at Caesar's. Let's cook it, bro. It was, let's go, let's go, it was go, insane. It had fountains. It had... In, inside? Inside. It had... In fact, one of the guys on the shoot knocked over the fountain, which is how... What? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. That was a good one. He Get took out a, of here! He took a header. He took a header. Oh. Uh, but that, that, that shoot at that villa was... Uh, mm. Chef's kiss good. Do you get yeah. a Caesar's black card? Um... Really not at liberty to discuss uh, these things. Look, look at you. Like, what, what do you want? Like, what do you want? I mean, I mean, I mean, let me, Chris, let me just, no, no, Chris. Trey, Trey, let me just ask yeah. the question. Can he be, be your plus one? Sure. <laughs> just have a question. Chris, if you Can ever, you just be your plus one just, just one time you in Vegas? You want to go, give me a call. I got it. We'll, the, draft. Take care. the draft. This is we'll what I'm take care of The draft. I will, I will be draft. spending an exorbitant amount of time in Vegas for the draft. Yes. Well, we're coming. Let's see if that's sweet. No, boo. Here we go. There we go. Chris, Chris and I were thinking about going to Vegas in a few weeks. So, you know, you know what I mean? Oh, sorry. I lost your number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not trending well, TJ. It's not trending well. All right. Very good. What was the first Sports Center commercial you were in? Oh, remember? Wow. I remember mine. What was yours? Well, I think it was in the background of a bunch, like the West Side Story one. Do you remember that one? Where you were snapping your you fingers? Snapping the fingers. I think I was. Were you on my side or Larry I think Bill's I was, side? I think I was on your side. Okay. I think I was on your side. All right. The, 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 one, the one that I remember, obviously, was the Jerry Stackhouse one. Um, where, you know, he's laughing at my name. Uh, I remember Spence, Spence Kramer previously mentioned, course, said, hey, how do you feel if we make fun of your name? I'm like, I've had this name my entire life. I'm used to that. <laughs> so, but the funniest part for me about that, if you go look at that commercial, they mm. shot it in my little cubby there, right? Yeah. And uh, there's, mm. as, as you zoom in on Jerry, like laughing at it, how stupid my name is. There are the pictures of my two kids on the background when they oh, were like five you. and three. Oh, boy. And they're about to be 30 and 27. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, but it's it's one of those things, too. I remember I remember when they come up with ideas and you just want to be in them. In them. I mean, yeah. guys, I'm telling you, when it was time for a Sports Center shoot, a Sports Center commercial shoot, it was all about who's in it and why am I not in more than that person? Correct. And how do I get in the ones that I'm going to get in? And they had like this book of all the scripts in them, and they would just basically hold them like like a like a poker hand yeah. directly they to their. They do not want you to see. They didn't want you to see because it was no. a very like they didn't want anybody to know who was in them. And then when they finally start coming out, you'd they be like, wait a minute. I'm why not, was I not in that one? What's, <laughs> like, there's like six other anchors. Like, why did they choose these people to be in? And it was very competitive. Well, you're, we liked each yeah, other very much. Absolutely. And then, and then when they would come to you with an idea that's kind of like, really, do I really want to do that? You'd say you had to do it. Like, make fun of your name. Correct. Uh, our when they sent you down. Our three guests, Dan Patrick, told like when I I I got the script about they're sending me down to the minors now. Yeah. I was very sensitive to this subject. I was like yeah. year three for me or year four. And I was trying, I was making a name for are myself. They, are, are, is there a subliminal message they're sending no, me? No, it's not just that. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the branding. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I've got the mug and the running man and I'm all about branding. Yeah. That's what I'm about. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm trying to brand myself as a sports center anchor. Yeah. 
yeah. worthy of the chair yep. next to Dan or yep. when Keith was there next to Keith yep. when Berman would would parachute in next to him yeah. like that's what I wanted to do and I right. and I, I I thought I was being successful so why would I want to have a commercial Be, see, where I'm see, sent down to the mines but see here's the here's the mental twist because we we know how good you are Rich this won't affect you well right that's that's the that's the executive they, front they, office they kind spin, of right? they, well yeah. they, I didn't get any spin I was I, I went to to Dan yeah because Dan was the one who fronted it. Yeah. You know, like he was the one who's yeah. like, you know, you, know, you just uh, sometimes, sometimes you got to, you, gotta, you know, sometimes you, you got to take a step back right, to take just, a step forward. And he, 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 he fronted the commercial. He basically yeah. told me, he's just like, get, get out of your head. Yeah. Cut, cut the crap. Yeah. You know, it's funny. This you're, is a funny spot. You're going to want to do it. Do the spot. And then I did it. And it's, you know, it's, it was great. It's in one of the all time greats where they send me down to James K. Polk's high school. Yeah. And, you know, and the kids are asking me, can, Mr. Rising, can you buy us some beer? You know, yeah. and it is very, very funny. And I'm glad I did it. But at the time, yeah. it was, you know, dicey, man. Your favorite spot of mine was the Lou Duva one. You see the, the go in my, oh, yeah. go in the back there. The, my kid eyes and uh, the kid eyes and there, silk right that there. was on Absolutely. Lou Duva's shoulders or in on the back of the chair in the green room. When you, this, when you, the facial expression when you sip the tea is just yeah. perfect. You know who was not very happy about that spot? Mm. Take a guess who wasn't happy about yeah, that. I can probably imagine. Take a guess. Go ahead and say it. I'll confirm it. Stuart? Correct. There you go. Yeah. Stuart wasn't that thrilled about it because he was just window dressing. And I was yeah. the guy. I had the lines. Uh, I had the laugh lines. And Stuart would just have to sit there and just be the prop. And Stuart's not happy about that. He was not a prop guy at all. <laughs> no. He, not a prop he's guy. In one, I mean, this was after he did with Kenny the commercial yeah. with Kobe yep. and, uh, and, and Keyshawn. And, Keyshawn. and Will, Jason Williams. Uh, J- think, yeah, Jason Williams. Yeah, and those, yeah. those are great spots. Yeah. And Stewart's now just got to, and Stewart's like, so I got anything. And Stewart would just be like, so I'm just sitting here? Yeah. The Pretty number much. of times you would look at them and say, so I'm just sitting here. Yeah. So recap, I'm just sitting here. No, I'm just sitting here. That's right. Yeah. I mean, like, that's true. Yeah. Like, this is the way. And then there was an, but I was a prop and one that Stewart was in, and I wasn't happy about it either. Yeah. Well, listen. Especially the, the one, the one where he's in the bathroom, okay, washing his hands. Correct. And the horse comes out. But the, but before the horse <laughs> comes out of the stall, yeah. a refer, a jockey comes out. Yes. And then I'm first. Yeah. Coming out of the stall, without washing oh. my hands before leaving the room. Yeah. Because for. The sake of having to move the commercial along, they would not let me wash, wash my, my hands. hands. Only Stuart was washing his hands. And I'm like, how come he gets to wash his hands and I don't have to wash my hands? Because, I mean, it's because everyone wants to know you're a bacteria ridden person. So that's why. One of the one of the guys who was like the one of the uh the A twos uh, on it, one of the audio what guys comes up to me as he's putting the microphone on me after I'm complaining. They're like, you yeah. know, I'm like, just have the water running, I'll just pass my hands through it, whatever. Yeah. So the guy that cause they said no. Yeah. And I had to do it. Otherwise, I was out of the spot. Yeah. That's uh, and so you want in or you want out. It's pretty much is what I got. Yeah. So I then <laughs> I then was just steaming as yeah. they're putting the microphone on me where I have nothing to say. Just it's me coming out of the stall and then walking out out of a stall. Yeah. Trey, not not like, not standing door stall, not standing at a urinal <laughs> out of a stall. What am where I doing other things in a are going on. door stall? Dropping a deuce. <laughs> Probably not writing a script. So I'm steaming, and the guy puts yeah. his, the microphone on my eyes. He puts on the microphone, and he goes, you know, it's more important to, to wash your hands before you go into the bathroom sometimes. Like, that helps. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, bro. Great. Thanks, I appreciate man. appreciate that, yeah. Not helping. That's not really what we're going for here, Dude, but I appreciate that Commercial, commercial <laughs> airs. Not a month later, I'm at the World <laughs> Series in Yankee Stadium, and some guy screams, hey, Eisen. How come you don't wash your hands when you're coming out of the can? <laughs> swear to God, that happened. That sounds like that guy was set up. Dude, it sounds like somebody it set you up. It had to be because yeah. I was so upset about it. Yeah, yeah, there were a few. And of those. Stuart was kind of like laughing the whole time because he yeah. knew I was steaming about it. Yeah. And maybe he's thinking, you know, back in that Lou Duva commercial, they should have given me a line because I'd hey, throw you, I'd throw you a little lifeline here. But he would just sit there smiling and laughing yeah. as the horse. Yeah. It was in one of the new buildings before yeah. they put anything in. The horse took the hugest dump in the <laughs> middle of the, of of what was going to be yeah. a bustling newsroom. And the horse didn't wash his hooves either. No, <laughs> no. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you.
Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, so what do folks need to know about this Super Bowl from Caesars Sportsbook, sir? Well, listen, we've done trace trends all week long, uh, all season long. We're dropping a couple of episodes of those. On uh, on YouTube? YouTube, Caesars, uh, YouTube channel, sports, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all my social feeds. Um, we got got a piece with my dad coming up. We also did a whole thing about the Super Bowl and all the Super Bowl history. Uh, I'm sort of a... I don't want to say that. I, I I like to think that I know a lot about the Super Bowl, for lack of a better term. You've covered a bunch of them. Yeah, so, so it's it's like my bum party trick. Some people can whittle and yodel. Mm-hmm. I can give you the score of, and the MVP of any Super Bowl. It's, okay. So, so we did a whole thing going through SoFi just talking about all the games and the scores and all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. It was fun. All right. And then there's, what what's your trend? You want to give anybody a little trend? Um, you got anything about what you think's going to... Bengals plus four and a half. Uh, what? what? Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's the line. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> way to get the minimum. Good job. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the pick, people. Uh, oh, okay. That's your. That's your. Come on. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll make the official pick on. Well, I'll do that on Friday. I'm, I'm still. See, I told you guys. Marinating. I told you guys. Marinating. They're all like, you're gonna add TJ. Go ahead. Yeah. Say what you said to me. Before well, I was thinking go. socially, we come, you know, do a little thing where we get everyone's picks. Yeah, which was like, ah, no one's yeah, gonna no, give you the people, picks today. People like. You, Trey, Thank Dan, you. coming up. You're still yeah. formulating. Yeah. You have your own. This is content for you, well, not it's, me. It's, and I, I, it's I, content for everyone, and I will happily share Rich. it with you on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but just not content for me on well, the no, Rich Eisen show. I will happily right send now. my pick into the Rich Eisen. Uh, yes, here's my content for the Rich Eisen show. Yes, sir. I will make a pick on Friday. <laughs> or how about we just have Trey, like, say, guys. the Bengals will win or the Rams will win, and we'll just use whichever take is right. The winner is... The Bengals. Pause. The winner is the Rams. There you go. Cut We're good. Get the time codes. There you go. We got it. Time. Get the time codes. One of those will work. Get the time codes. <laughs> it's going to overtime. Oh. 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 Nah. <laughs> Give it a shot. I don't know. You know a guy in Vegas. You know what I mean? Where he's got the, the top floor in this thing. All right. You got the photograph, Hoskins? You want to pop it up here? Pop it up here. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh, a Halle Berry <sighs> selfie. Look at you, how Man. smug and happy Yeah, that, you that's are. the definition so of a leap eating grin. Trey like, Wingo, so I'm so I was like, I so cannot jealous. believe she she said well, yes. Well, from Freeman, Halle Berry doesn't age, and then you just coming over the top. Dunk on him. Firm. Man. The How goat. do you ask for a selfie? How do you ask for a selfie? Uh, because the Christy no. Fitchner story worked. Is that how it worked? That's how it worked. So they. I, I, I had an in. I had an opening. We, <laughs> we, we engaged. In. We we engaged, and it wasn't just like, "Hey, can I get a?" Fo-? She's like, "Oh, sure," because you know we have that connection. You have the connection from Greenwich, Connecticut, yeah. back in the Thank day. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate you, buddy. Wherever you are, Steve Where Young. Steve Young Thank is you. everyone. Young. <laughs> what was he like in high school, Trip? Very aloof. Yeah, like Steve Young. This is a true story. We we I did a, a half forgotten history episode of the podcast with yes. him. Trey Wingle presents. Check it out wherever you get your podcast. Um, and like he admitted, he he completed forty one percent of his passes in high school, forty one percent. Like he was a terrible thrower. Like he could Careful, not throw. Grit Young would be very upset about that. Grit. Well, if you remember, Grit Cam Young was I, a long, long, long way away. And we talked about that because yes. like, he didn't know how to throw a football until he went to BYU. He went to BYU as a defensive back because the offensive coordinator at the time said to him, I don't like lefties. And he was like, Jeez, okay. What a different that was time. It. Wow. I don't like lefties. I don't like lefties. Wow. Hall of Fame career later, perhaps you should like lefties. I, I, it, it, I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming that OC didn't like quarterbacks that can run very much, or that's BYU, so that maybe they had to have that. Yeah. I don't know. But. It was just a disaster. In fact, this is another great story. I don't know where we are up against the clock here. Go for it. Steve Young owes his career to Sean Salisbury. Because Steve, again, was was a defensive back, Mm -hmm. and they were going to convert him to quarterback because they had some people leave to go on their Mormon mission. Mm -hmm. But they also said, look, we've got this kid out of Southern California who's Mormon. His name is Sean Salisbury. And if he commits to BYU, you're never going to see the field. Mm -hmm. And he he went to USC. Now, Steve probably would have found a way, but like, if if Sean Salisbury goes to... To BYU, Steve Young's career takes a completely different and more circumlocutous path. And I love things like that. Like that little point in the road changed his entire life. Very good. His entire life. And um, it all starts and it all leads to a selfie with uh, Halle Berry. Halle all Berry. roads lead to a what, selfie with Halle Berry. What did, your, what did your wife think of the smug she, look on your face? She was like, when you got that picture. I think she said, I, mean, I would have looked the same way too. <laughs> very good. Respect. You're Cleopatra. Your own Cleopatra. There you go. 
All right, Trey Wingo. Uh, everyone check out uh, at Wingo Z, uh, at Trey.Wingo on Instagram, your YouTube page for your Trey's Trends, uh, care of Caesars Sportsbook, the chief trends officer for said organization, Trey Wingo. Great to see you, bro. Always a pleasure, my friend. Big time. Cheers to everybody. There you Thank go, you, everybody. Everyone. There you Thank go. You, Hit him straight, too, Trey. I'm going to try. I know. I can't wait for your next selfie in some beautiful spot. Give me 10 days. There you go. Trey Wingo, everybody. <laughs> Trey Wingo. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.